The mayfly is arguably the most graceful of the macroinvertebrates. With its upright wings and sailboat silhouette, it is unlikely to be confused with any other insect. Mayfly nymphs are segregated into four behavioral groups, the crawlers, the clingers, the burrowers, and the swimmers. The crawlers can live in moderate currents and scuttle about the substrate like exotic little crabs as they search for food. With flattened bodies and strong, sprawling limbs, clinger mayflies are adapted to dwelling in the fastest currents. All mayflies frequently molt their skin known as an exoskeleton. The freshly molted nymphs are soft and pale. Burrowing mayfly nymphs, such as this hexagenia, probe with their tusks for suitable substrate in which to dig their homes. Giant gills are required to extract oxygen from the confined environment. Swimmer mayflies are adept at crawling about, but unlike other nymphs, they can rival small fishes with their ability to swim. The flexible body and streamlined profile make for a nearly perfect hydrodynamic form. Many of the swimmers lock their tails into a single paddle, which they use like a dolphin's fluke. Though there are many exceptions to the rule, the typical mayfly nymph spends about one year underwater. They stay close to the protective gravel and weeds where their cryptic coloration hides them from predators such as fish. On the day that they are to molt into the adult form, many mayflies develop a shiny layer of gas beneath their translucent cuticle. As the gases increase, so does the nymph's buoyancy, and many have a hard time keeping a hold of the bottom. Finally overwhelmed by buoyancy, these nymphs are stripped from the bottom and floated into the unnatural and dangerous realm of open water. Many of these nymphs stubbornly fight the upward pool and repeatedly dive for the safety of the bottom, only to be carried upwards once again by the relentless pull of the entrained gases. Exhausted by the effort of fighting the drift, many nymphs lack the energy required to break through the rubbery surface film, and a huge percentage die in the struggle. The nymphs with the highest survival rate are those that don't waste their strength fighting the upward pool and instead swim boldly towards the surface. These mayflies have plenty of energy and break through the film with ease. At the surface, the nymph punches through the film, its exoskeleton breaks open, and frees the adult mayfly within. This transition from a nymph to the adult is known as an emergence. Some mayfly species, such as this Isonychia, don't risk the open water dash and instead simply crawl out into the terrestrial realm to molt.
The adult mayfly is unique in the insect world in that it is born sexually immature and must undergo yet another molt. The sexually immature stage is known as the subimago or dun phase. The final molt brings forth a brand new insect complete with a fresh set of crystal clear wings. Its digestive system has been replaced by reproductive organs and the mayfly can no longer eat or drink. The sexually mature mayfly is called the imago. Fly fishermen know it as the spinner because of the bobbing flight of the insect as it releases scents to attract a mate. These mating swarms can reach suffocating proportions. As the swarm drops closer to the water, it is known as a spinner fault. The mayflies quickly burn up their finite energy reserves and fall in the water to die. To anglers, these hapless bugs are known as spent spinners. To trout, they are known as dinner. <laughs>